Alex Pereira is a fascinating athlete to watch move. When we look at two of his signature movements from a biomechanical perspective, we can learn a lot. The way he does these movements is very different to other athletes, and understanding what he does differently can help us to become better movers ourselves. So first up, Alex's leg kick is very atypical. It looks a lot more like a forward sweep. How does he make this work? Why does it work well? And why aren't other athletes copying him? A more typical leg kick starts with a pivot of the front foot, winding up the elastic potential of the body to rotate back to this point. This pivot happens at the hip joint on the standing leg. The other hip then turns over as the leg kicks through. And the final impetus of the strike comes from the rapidly extending knee joint through the power of the quad. At times, Alex's kick breaks nearly all these rules. Depending on the kick you look at, there are more elements of a traditional kicking movement present sometimes, but at its most extreme, it's a completely different movement. There is a minimal pivot on that front foot, minimal turning over of the hip, and the kicking leg extends much sooner. In fact, what he's doing is so different that people in kicking tutorials will tell you that what he is doing is straight up wrong. Alex's leg kick at its core is a hip flexion sweep with the weight of his body behind it. Unlike in a more typical leg kicking movement where the force you're applying is that of an extending lower leg via quad support on a stable, relatively fixed trunk, in Alex's kick, the movement is driven much more by dynamic hip flexion and adduction movements. And the impetus and the force is really about how he's able to transfer his body weight into that kick. Part of the key to this is getting a completely straight leg much earlier than in a typical kick. This means when you hit the person, you have a whole stable leg on a hip joint applying force. It's a much longer lever but Alex ideally stabilizes his hip joint too. He doesn't necessarily get into full hip extension through this joint, but he's moving towards that. And his hip extension muscles are working to actively stabilize and extend the joint as he's doing this. This is just the same principle as the knee joint, but extended further up the kinetic chain. And if he manages to stabilize both of these joints well, it means he can essentially sweep across with the weight of his entire body, which means that he's effectively hitting the person with a two meter lever. And Alex is just not a small guy. This is a lot of force. A more typical leg kick often ends up only being a 50 centimeter or one meter lever, depending on the technique used. It's kind of basic physics here, but the bigger the lever, the bigger the force. The bigger the lever you can hit someone with, the better. The difference between these two movements is kind of analogous to the difference between kneeing someone in a clinch with the hip flexion relative to the fixed stable body being the driving force or a flying knee where the knee has the entire weight of the body behind it. Let's look at a few more technical specifics of how this actually works. The biggest technical struggle with this movement, and probably the main reason a lot of other people aren't doing this, is that they're not able to stabilize both of these hips properly throughout the sweeping movement. It's one thing to emulate the position to make it look the same, but it's another thing entirely to emulate the support to have the same strength behind it. You need to have this kicking hip stable at all times to give the hip flexor something to pull against, to create the action, to carry the weight of the body through behind it. The major muscle group responsible for doing this are the glutes. And this is in both the striking and the standing leg. And if we notice something that coincides nicely about Alex's particular physiology is that he's thick with a capital C. I mean, he's got that dump truck. You have gotta be rocking some serious glutes to do this movement. The standing leg has to be able to produce the dynamics to come forward explosively, as well as support the entire body structure relative to the ground, holding him upright. But also, more importantly, the sweeping leg must have a stable trunk behind it. This stability is what allows the transfer of force. If it's not a solid thing, like a log of wood, it bends and deforms on impact. We want it to hit the thing solid and bend and deform the other person. So most people, when they think of muscles working, they think of concentric action, like tensing it as you shorten it. But muscles can also work eccentrically as they lengthen. So we need to support our flexion muscles that are lifting and sweeping our leg across with extensors. These are our glutes, and when they work well, they bring with it a stable torso, which is your weight. But more than that, he's stable at every point in this range of motion, so whenever he does connect, he knows that he's got that weight behind him. It's one thing to be stable at one fixed point, but to be doing it dynamically, at a high speed, and at every single instance of that, is much, much harder. Now, don't get me wrong, really good leg kickers using the more typical technique can still put a lot of their body weight behind a kick, but it's just mechanically much more disadvantaged when you're trying to do this. A more typical quad kick is really gonna to struggle to deliver weight through the extending knee joint. This is quite difficult for a number of different reasons. One of them is the proclivity for the foot to rotate before and upon impact, which can really threaten the stability of the knee joint. Alex's kicking shape is in some ways a much better way to apply force if you can do the requisite stabilizing further up the kinetic chain. There are a number of other benefits to this style of kicking. 
Without that obvious pivot on the front foot, you aren't giving anywhere near as much information to the person you're trying to strike. If you noticed in the Izzy versus Pereira fight, Izzy's leg kicks were often being checked or evaded, whereas Alex's were almost always hitting. This is basically because the setup for a traditional leg kick is much more obvious. You pivot and it's just a clear giveaway. This square stance also works in conjunction with the fact that the movement is very strange directionally. It's moving very forward and diagonally. It's, it's hard to predict. And you can almost even make it look like you're moving away from the person as you're kicking them. If you fade back through your hips slightly as you initiate the kick, it becomes almost invisible. It's just a very tricky movement. This foot pivot also leads into a few other disadvantages for more traditional leg kicks. If you miss the kick, you're much more likely to spin around. And this is something that doesn't happen to Alex. He has a kind of awkward shuffle, but he's never turning his back to the opponent, which often does not end well at all. Next, I want to talk about Alex's attempts to speed run unconsciousness for his opponents. When we think about his left hook, we first really need to think about the important question, which is how do you make someone go unconscious? Like what's actually happening? But before I do that, if you're enjoying this video, please consider supporting me. It helps me to keep making the videos. You can click this thingy and give me some money. Okay, now back to the video. Now knockouts occur in a few different ways and the science of it's like not completely understood, but basically it can happen from multiple strikes, like traumatizing nerves, from the brain impact on the skull and from strain on like the cerebellum and lower brain areas from rotational forces. Now Alex uses a combination of these methods, but what I think makes his left hook so distinctive is where it hits on the person and what it does to them when it does. He almost always hooks people from behind the jaw. He almost never comes across sideways. This like behind the jaw action causes a lot more rotation than a purely forwards or sideways movement does. It basically just aggressively spins the skull around. And this rotation in particular is what sends people into the shadow realm. This combines with the fact that when coming from this angle, the punch is a lot less visible, which means people can't appropriately create resistive tension or move with the punch. They're getting literally blindsided. As an aside, this is why your typical head forward posture is super garbage for striking defense. From this angle, it's a lot easier to get caught from behind with the punch, like your head is just further forward in space, you're not gonna see it coming. But not only that, your neck muscles are in a fairly mechanically disadvantaged position with some of them being really long and others being quite short, and they can't support or rotate as well to deal with these forces. Which is one of the many reasons why you're never gonna see very high level forward head posture athletes. Okay, so in terms of the more technical aspects of Alex's left hook, the two really important ones are rotation and stability. This really is a primarily rotational movement and Alex has a fantastic alternate career in gymnastics if he wasn't like six foot four. He's just spinning really well, really fast and stabilizing that movement incredibly well. I go into kind of this stuff in a lot more detail in my video about Izzy, so if you're interested, you can see more there. But basically, getting a good strike is about having appropriate stabilization at the moment of generation and impact. Alex does a fantastic job of generating these rotational forces. As he sets up for his hook, he lengthens his right lat and abdominals across his body, while loading them eccentrically and maintaining that connection so that he can rapidly contract them, pulling his left shoulder back across his body. He supports his weight on his left foot in particular very well as he does this, creating a stable connection point. And he just spins extremely fluidly given his size and build. This movement isn't getting caught anywhere. It's unimpeded and this fluidity and speed is what makes it so destructive. As that generic Bruce Lee quote goes, fear the guy who's done a punch 10,000 times and there's no doubt Alex has done this. And both of these strikes, his left hook and his leg kick, share the fact that they're timed and placed nearly perfectly. Like it's one thing to hit the air, but the efficacy of these strikes in particular is also about where he hits the person and the shape of Alex's body as he does this. And this is basically just high level movement skill. Like it's one thing to hit a bag, but it's another thing to do it against a moving target. To be both fast, powerful and precise is just a combination of attributes that are extremely rare. But if you do want to get better at striking, there are things you can do. And I think one of the most helpful is a perspective shift. I think a lot of times people think about movement in terms of just reps or getting stronger. I recommend looking at and thinking about your movement like you're looking at a stranger and going back to first principles and asking yourself hard questions and not assuming you're doing things correctly. This is not the first time that Alex has innovated on a kick. Like the important thing to learn here are the principles, not just rote learning movements because someone told you to. Like he also did a heel first kick in kickboxing, which is absolutely wild when you look at it. He has a goal, like he's trying to apply force into the other person and he doesn't really care about following any particular rule to achieve that outcome. He just instinctively grasps the base principles that he's working with. And if you don't do this instinctively, learning about it is the next best thing. You need to think about movement in terms of force application, levers, position, support, 
Some other helpful things you could do is watch the video I made on Izzy. I talk about a lot of different things. There's a little bit of crossover, but I think there's a lot of other stuff in there that's super helpful. Second, watch all the other videos that I made on my channel, not just plugging those, but there are a lot of concepts that cross over between sports and disciplines that are extremely helpful. Three, you could employ me as a consultant and give me money to teach you things. Anyway, that's all for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm working on a wrestling grappling thing, which should be out at some point, but if there's anything else you guys would like to see, let me know and I might make it. Also, if you want to support the channel, you could share this video with your friends, or even better, you can give me a super thanks thing. Normally, if you watch this video, YouTube is giving me like an eighth of a cent. Instead, you could give me like $2, which would make my life better because then I'd have more money and time to make more videos. And I'd really appreciate it. So thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed the video. Peace out.